Welcome to the On With Shahan podcast. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Today I have the best guest I've ever had on the podcast, Thank you. ever will have on the podcast. She's been asking me for a very long time to get her on the podcast. I refused to do it. Yeah, why? Because I wanted a good reason to do it. And now we have a good reason. And we're gonna promote what you're doing. And uh, I think it's great to celebrate that success. I'm really glad you're on. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So what have you thought about the Anwar Chan podcast so far? Is it a waste of time? Should I stop doing it? No, it's good, but I think it should be the Anwar Shahan and Courtney. <laughs> and audience, please subscribe and make this the most viewed video so I can be on here for like the rest of my life. So okay. please, please. Yeah. You are a very special, talented person, obviously. What is your background? How did you go from entrepreneurship to business school to startups to cheese? So walk me through the journey, <laughs> you know, it, it just like, it's so much about your personality too, that there's all these different things, but there is a common thread yeah. among these things. I so mean, what's your background like? I mean, when you say it like that, it sounds like I'm kind of all over the place, yeah. but after college, I majored in anthropology with like a biomedical aspect. I thought forensics was so cool and I realized you know, there's not really much you can do with that degree. So I right. decided, um, you know, what, I'm just going to start an apparel company it kind of started as a hobby and just kind of took off from there I ended up implementing a huge campus reps program and then from there I was like you know what I should do something I needed you know go back to business school so I really only wanted to go to one business school I applied to USC that was the only one I wanted to go to luckily I got in and after business school we got married and you know we moved up to the Bay Area and I decided to not move my apparel company with me just because all of the machines and everything was in LA and so I took a job at an early stage startup called Booster Fuels. Um, what does Booster do? Yeah, it's essentially, um, you know, mobile fuel delivery. The app is very similar to like Uber or Lyft. You right. park and you push the button and gas comes to your car. Um, so I really love that. Was an early employee there. And then from there decided to move to a startup incubator called Runway Innovation Hub, which is inside the Twitter building. And I was there for two years and, you know, kind of worked with, gosh, almost 200 startups that had come through the space, um, just building community, helping them, you know, get their ideas from like the ideation stage to either getting funding, exiting, um, and so forth. It was, it was really quite fun. Um, and while I was there, um, I was doing a lot with like corporate events and catering and the food industry. And, and we were living in Marin. Yeah. And time. we were living. You were working in, in San Francisco and we yeah. were in Marin. Yeah. And when we were living in Marin, um, I, you know, just fell in love with the city we were in and we were right at the base of Mount Tam. And, you know, I was shopping at the grocery store and I saw this one cheese called Mount Tam. I was like, oh, I have to get it. You know, this is so cliche. We just moved here. You know, and then we both ate it, and you actually finished the whole entire thing. <laughs> and I was so mad because it's like thirty-five dollars a pound. Um, but I was like, okay, why is this cheese so expensive? And it's so good. And so I kind of started like researching, you know, into all the cheese, um, you know, how it's made, where it's made, you know, the stories behind all the farmers, right. the dairies. Um, and it just kind of became a black hole for me. So while I was still working at Runway, I was doing all of this on the side. I was taking, you know, all these classes at the cheese school in San Francisco. I was, you know, learning all of like what it needs, like what you need to be a cheesemonger, the different cutting techniques, the wrapping techniques. Um, and then I decided to um, compete in the Cheesemonger Invitational on a whim two years ago. And it was like the best decision of my life because they had, you know, a meet the maker day where we got to meet so many industry leaders, um, whether they were people who imported the cheese, um, uh, the actual cheese makers, the dairy farmers, um, you know, hearing their stories and the recipes passed down from generation to generation, the way they, you know, treated their animals, their land. It, there's just a huge story behind everything and then decided, you know what, um, I'm going to jump in and, you know, do the cheese full time. Um, there's actually a lot of technology behind the cheese as well. So you can kind of tie into my startup backgrounds and backing up before you get into more of the cheese. Yeah. Uh, you started, uh, early on in your career, like you're 14, 15, you created this bookmark. 
You and you became the junior businesswoman of the year. Kind you, of embarrassing, you, yeah, yes. <laughs> you created two different startups, one in custom apparel, other ones of like these really cool like apparels that you picked and curated. And then you, you chose cheese and entrepreneurship and cheese. But like what what attracted you to startups? Like why don't you like you spent some time at a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> you spent time at Avery Dennison in Glendale, yeah. actually over here. Uh, but you didn't really enjoy it. There's something about you that's attracting you to sparking and starting new things, uh, building new products, uh, doing exciting custom things. What is that about your personality that makes you want to do that? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I have a very unique personality, and I know you know that because you have to deal with me all the time. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's just something with the entrepreneurship. You feel like you can, you know, make a difference in the world. And, like, you know there's a problem and you want to solve it so if you're doing that there's if you're the one who's finding a problem there's going to be like most likely more people who are dealing with that problem so if you can find a way to solve it it's just very fulfilling you know i loved my work at avery dennison i had an amazing team and you know being with a big company with such big backing we could you know get so much done but if they didn't know me personally i just kind of wasn't feeling like super fulfilled like i was making a difference um so that's why I went back to entrepreneurship and, you know, leading other startups. And, you know, when I was at Runway leading startups for two years, I'm telling them every day, you know, like, follow your dreams, do what you're passionate about. And I realized, like, why am I not doing that anymore? You know, because I went from the entrepreneurship side to the advisory side, and I'm giving them this advice that I wasn't even taking myself. So that's why I decided, you know, I'm still you know, advising startups, we're working with Launch Armenia, um, we're working with some amazing teams there, but I'm able to do my own startup again. And, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to be on both sides, but I'm just really, you know, thankful that, you know, I can I can live out my dream and, and do what I think I can make a difference in. Yeah, and, and I think that's great. You're still, you're still advising startups, you're still uh, scratching that itch, but also you love cheese, you have a passion with cheese and the cheese shop that you're creating. What, one thing that I'm really fascinated about, I, I said this on the previous podcast, there's this book called Relentless by Tim Grover. He was the coach and mentor for Michael Jordan. He was on that Last Dance documentary that yeah. I forced you to watch. <laughs> it wasn't uh, that bad, yeah, actually. Yeah. I actually enjoyed it. And uh, Jordan and him, for that matter, they're an expert at their craft and it's very clear that you know they're going to dedicate everything they can to work harder than you are. They're going to always be on. And similar to like the stuff I'm doing, like, you know, I want to create a platform to, uh, to support startups. I am engulfing myself in everything startup possible. And what I really liked about all the stuff you're doing and where ultimately my support for you, like went up like crazy was like, you totally engulfed yourself with everything cheese. We had thousands of dollars worth of <laughs> cheese that you got for free from promoting people and building this, this cheese brand called the cheese chat and you really know more than cheese you became a cheesemonger everybody knows you as cheese you're putting together these classes so you're clearly the expert like similar to how i view, think people view me with like bitcoin and cryptocurrencies you know people come to you and say hey courtney with cheese what wine and whatnot so how did you become an expert at your craft what does it take to become an expert at your craft because i notice you and actually steal a lot from what you're doing in the sense that you talk to cheese makers you talk to cheese stores cheese influencers people that put on these events uh, different suppliers like so how did you become an expert yeah so I mean I'm still by no means an expert um, I'm working every day I have every cheese book ever written like shelves and shelves of cheese books um, I'm just fascinated by it um, so the way I got kind of you know into the cheese world was you know taking classes different pairing things like learning you know the different taste markers the textures the correct terms all the different kinds of cheese and you know being at the cheese mom reputational we got to work with everyone so um i i think for me what really got me going was hearing all the stories from the cheese makers and you know everything has a huge story behind it and I never really had thought about that you know when I went to the grocery store I would just say oh yeah but cheese looks good let me get it and I wouldn't realize that and actually being on the cheese monger side now and realizing you know people ask questions like why does this cheese cost so much like why is it this way why is there like ashy mold on it like 
why would I want to eat that? You know, just learning how to properly educate people, um, that has taken time and skills and I definitely still don't know everything, but you know, just working through it, asking questions. I'm in a bunch of different cheese support groups and if there's something I can't answer, I know someone who can. So, um, just working every day to better myself. There's always new like cheese making techniques, even new farming practices that are, you know, being tested every single day. And, you know, there's always something to learn. So just staying on top of things is, is super important. Yeah, and one of, one of the other things that I've been uh, really interested in watching co different companies, uh, like I had, for example, uh, Hot Chateau from Gigi on. Yeah. And one of the things that he did at Gigi is like a, it's like a, the Uber of Armenia. Uh, their ride delivery is the largest ride delivery in Armenia. They came here. They were going to do a shuttle service. And when the coronavirus happened, they pivoted and they, and they did grocery delivery services. Uh, so they they took this time, this crisis, and they pivoted. With you, um, we were, you had a cheese blog. You built an audience of thousands of people. And then um, from that, you were doing uh, cheese platters, these grazing tables with these really beautiful cheese tables. Um, and then um, what we, you and I were working on is working on a business plan of creating a physical retail cheese shop mm -hmm. uh, called the La Canada Cheese Shop. And, uh, of course, uh, nothing. the one thing that's you can count on is change in life yeah. and uh, the coronavirus happened uh, you change your name to the La Canada Cheese Shop uh, we were about to open a retail location and we stopped that and uh, talk to me a little bit about what happened at that point what you were planning on doing and then what you did as a pivot that has now led to great success and how you proved your husband so wrong and we'll talk about the husband and wife dynamics but you did prove me wrong and feel free to call me out on that talking about the launch of the company during right before the crisis hitting and then how you pivoted yeah so um i first started out as a cheese blog um i just really love to share about cheese with everyone and you know built up a huge following and you know we were working like when i was at runway i was doing lots of different corporate events and startup events and I decided, you know, we're hiring all these caterers, we're like bringing all kinds of food in, why don't we just start doing cheese at these events? And everyone like kind of fell in love with it. Then everyone started kind of referring to me as like, oh, that's the cheese lady, you know, she's she's always gonna bring cheese, she's gonna, you know, have lots of knowledge, she'll answer me. So after I kind of started getting that reputation, I'm like, you know, I really should do this more full time. And I've always wanted to own a retail shop um, I mean, before it was, I wanted to have it for my apparel. It just never really kind of worked out. And so I shut that down. Yeah. Yeah. But you were right on that. Actually. I hate to admit it, but that was a good decision to not open a shop for that. You know, retail is really hard, especially now. But for me, like I wanted to open a shop because I really want to create experiences. And so along and a with, community. Yeah. 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 And along with my cheese blog, what I had done um, was I started offering, you know, catering services, you know, I was just doing it kind of on the side and teaching classes on nights and weekends and really building up this community and people loved the classes. And I'm like, okay, why can't I have a cheese shop, the retail location that I've always wanted, where I can have a hundred different kinds of cheese, even more, be able to tell their stories. It's a place that I can also host my classes at. I can build community. That's what I loved, you know, with the startups is everyone there is kind of going through the same stuff and you're able to just kind of work with them and and building a community is so important to me so you know with the shop i wanted to kind of tie everything in with what i was doing um and build that out and i finally convinced my husband who is not easy to convince on anything that a cheese shop was the right thing to do so we finally agreed on it we found the perfect location we submitted an offer and then coronavirus happened. So that was like, I was on such a high of like, wow, this is finally happening. Everything I've ever wanted. And then, oh, okay. No, you can't go into any shops. You can't have in-person classes. Like everything about my business plan was not going to work. Like you're not catering big parties because no one's having parties, no social gatherings, nothing. So every, all like every aspect of it didn't work. So I was like, okay, what can I do? I'm, I'm determined to make this work and I really, like, I'll do whatever it takes. So I was looking into it and I'm like, okay, you know what? Businesses right now, they can't have people in the shop, but they can deliver. Right. 
And, you know, our town is very small. I mean, I grew up in this town. My mom grew up in this town. My grandparents grew up in this town. Like, they've been in this town forever. Same high school, everything. And there's only a few places that actually do delivery. Most stuff is only pickup. And I decided, you know what? Let's let's do delivery. I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're going to find some infrastructure. We're going to figure out how to do it. We're going to get a commercial kitchen to make sure everything is up to code, have all the licensing. And you know what? We can just rent out a kitchen from a restaurant that's closed during this time, and we will just start delivering. And I didn't know how well it was going to work. <laughs> and um, you asked me, okay, if you can just sell like three cheese plates, I'll be happy. So I kind of yeah. So so just a, <laughs> just some backstory. So at this time, you know, she was she still really wanted the cheese shop, and I was like, I don't know, like I don't know if this is gonna work. Like, are people were gonna buy this stuff, and all that. She's like, okay, well, I think that I could still do these like meat and cheese boxes, like these smaller ones, like individual, like four for like a family or like eight or whatever. And uh, I said, I don't know if that's gonna work. You're like, okay, and then I was like, if you could sell three, you'll prove me wrong. <laughs> you know, if you could sell one of these things, like in potentially could be like a subscription where you sell these meat and cheese boxes to these companies or to these uh, families within five miles of La Cunada, right? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, you know what? Let's see how this is going to work. I hadn't really thought it through yet. Like I knew the kitchen I was going to use. I knew what I needed. Um, I had a place, like I've been working wholesale for a long time. So I had a source for all the boxes, for all the packaging, you know, all the stuff we needed. And I was like, okay, let me just post in one group. There's a private group for like, you know, parents in our town. And I figured, okay, I'll start small. I'll just post one, one thing saying, hey, I'm gonna do this. If there's any interest, you know, just let me know and we'll put up some like delivery times. So I kind of just made a splash page on the website and I literally looked an hour later and I had like a hundred orders. It was insane. But I think the first week we delivered like enough cheese to feed close to 300 people it was like I mean I knew I could do it and I knew I was gonna prove you wrong <laughs> but I didn't realize like to the extent of what was happening did and I admit I was wrong yeah huh yeah you actually did so that's good you're you're actually really good about admitting you're wrong when you're wrong which is not often but uh, yeah see it's never it's usually never but go ahead mm, uh -huh. you, you have been wrong sometimes <laughs> but, um no and so then I was like okay this has to be a fluke like there's no way and then I realized the next week same amount of orders next week same amount of orders and so for the last like what five weeks now we've been consistently sold out of all of our delivery slots like obviously i'm just one person um so we're working on hiring more but you know <clears throat> oh we have i have a delivery driver who's been helping out because i can only do so many routes and you know we deliver in like la cunada la crescenta montrose um we we do do some in glendale <coughs> Pasadena too and you know based on time there's only so much time, you know, between a two hour delivery window of how many houses we can get to. So I had to get extra help. Um, and your mom's been extremely Yeah, helpful. my mom has been helping too. A um, lot, yeah. A lot, yeah. And then with my delivery driver, I, I pay him in cheese. <laughs> And uh, he seems to be happy about that, so yeah. I can't complain. Let's talk. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the husband and wife dynamics, because I do. I am your delivery driver. Every time I'm done with my day job, I, I make sure to set some time to help you with deliveries while you're packaging everything up. I go out and make the the different deliveries. You set me on the delivery route, and I get to know the business. And actually, it really helps me with other startups I'm working with to really do the day to day operations and all that. And the fact that we don't have to pay a delivery driver and I can help you. Yeah. I get some bonus points at home. I like that. So let's talk about husband and wife working together. Okay. So I think initially um, both you and I worked at home uh, for a short amount of time together when we were in the Bay. And it was a disaster. I it was like one of the worst experiences <laughs> of my life. I hated working every day with you. because you I'm a joy to work with. No, because the thing is you would take... Like if I'm just hanging out and I'm doing work, you take that as like I'm avoiding you or like I don't want to talk to you when I'm doing the work, you take it personally. So you I always just, wanted to hang out with me. Yeah. It's not, to, not to say I didn't want to hang out with you, but I have to do the work and I like having my alone time. And so we did, were not communicating the same language. You were trying to be caring and show you're caring. But to me, I'm like, okay, if you're caring, I'm saying I need my space. But anyways, so it didn't work out. No, it did not. It didn't, right? We both got no work done. Yeah, no work done. So then we both went to work, 
And then, uh, and then after when we moved from the Bay to LA about a year ago, year and a half ago, um, we worked together again. And I think it was finally we had good communication of saying, look, here's my style. Here's your style. Yeah. We'll set aside some time together, you know, to spend time together. We're not always the best at that, but we do set time together to make sure to spend time, have fun, whatnot. But, and then we also made the decision jointly that, you know, a lot of our friends might be buying houses, you know, having enterprise jobs, which are great. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one path to go. We have a different path where we're, both of us like to take risks, right? We both like yeah. being entrepreneurs. It's a different profile, right? We have a different risk profile. Um, and then we're both starting business together. Instead of maybe buying a house, we're investing in our businesses. I think at this point in our lives, we want to build a business, something that can last something that has our stamp on it. I think the thing that both you and I struggle with is because we're both creative people, we like to do a lot of different things. We have a lot of different skills. When we work at companies, we feel like our creativity is kind of stomped out. Exactly. And we feel burnt out at these companies because like me with my account exec, you have a quota, you do these things. I like sales and I like doing all that, but I like doing a million other things. And if it's just one thing, that's not the full version of myself. I think the big thing with husband and wife dynamics for us is that like we're both doing what we love and we're supporting each other you support me a ton i mean you've been in the startup world in terms of building community creating events you really support me in doing that i try to support you and i'm not very good at cheese but i could deliver the cheese plates to other people yeah. and i've really liked the way we worked of course like you know if you're working together all the time there's going to be challenges but i think what we've done really well is just like hey you're doing this i'm doing that uh, what can we do in terms of not necessarily a leadership role for the other person's startup, but how can I do support stuff in the background to help that person and the gaps they might have? Yeah, I, I feel like that's so important because, you know, when we first got married, we had different goals for the future, I think. And obviously it'll be almost four years. We'll be starting our fifth year together in July. And so we've worked out like, what our long-term goals are and you know yes right now with the startups and you know kind of uncertainty of what's going to happen and you know not the steady paycheck of our normal like corporate jobs is you know it's a little scary but if we're willing to like you know kind of take the risk now we're setting ourselves up like for the future where maybe we'll open up other locations same right. with you it's kind of like you had to put in the work at the beginning you know it's really nice that like we're actually on the same page with that and we're willing to take these risks together and you know it's cool to be kind of on this journey because we're both starting something and we I feel like it's brought us closer because we can you know hear each other out we're going through the same startup struggles um, we're going through just kind of everything together on the same steps versus just one of us um, yeah. and yeah. then one in a corporate it, it was just that's what we we're doing before for the context you guys yeah. know one of I was trying to build something failing miserably while Courtney was... You learned a lot, though. Yeah, while Courtney was working at a company, I'd left this venture firm uh, because their firm ran out of money, and uh, it was during the crypto crash, so I started a startup consulting firm, and I was gaining equity, but I wasn't necessarily getting cash, so Courtney still had a full-time job at that point, and it was kind of like she was there, and then she'd do events, so she'd be staying home. She was staying uh, at work really late, yeah. so her hours were really messed up, and then, like, it was very stressful. I was doing terribly in terms of, I was trying to raise a venture fund. I failed that miserably. Like like she said, I learned a lot, I networked a lot, and it led me to what I'm doing now. But uh, it was really different because we were on different pages and you were in a very structured thing. You were, stru you were, you were um, ups up, not upset, but like you were struggling for the same reasons I was struggling in terms of like, you want to create, you want to be in a situation where you could be the full version of yourself. Uh, so just like wrapping up a couple more questions. Um, you mentioned Launch Armenia, for those that don't know. Uh, Launch Armenia, we're still working. Uh, we still have the same initiative where we wanna shine a, spark, a spotlight on Armenian startups, make sure there's awareness, support them in any way we can. Um, we think Armenian startups are going to be a huge player in the global landscape. We spent a lot of time this summer. I spent a ton of time uh, over the last year to two years with these startups. Courtney's been extremely involved um, as well. Uh, question for you, when yeah. we went to Armenia, the time you spent with Armenian startups since, what gets you excited about Armenian startups? Why do you like this initiative and why are you a co-founder in Launch Armenia? Yeah, so 
I Armenia obviously we're both Armenian if you can't tell yeah. <laughs> um but you know my family has always kind of gone to Armenia in the summers to do medical mission work but I've always seen you know hard work that's like what well, I think that's like one of the number one traits I would describe the Armenians as like they're hard workers and you know if you saw everything like the whole history of Armenia like you have to overcome so much adversity to get to where like where they are right now and so when we were working with the startups um you know honestly like I've worked with a ton of startups and you know many founders are very hard working but there's just something so special about the Armenian startups it's like nothing I've ever seen they're determined they're scrappy they like will do whatever it takes to get stuff done with like even zero funding they're willing to you know work nights and weekends and especially like when they call to the u.s like we're like 11 to 12 hours time difference depending on you know our daylight savings and like they're willing to you know work at all hours um that's just it's so motivating to see um the startups just willing to grind it out and i think you know that's why i see them succeeding so much and also having the courage right to come yeah. here and like you see people even here they're scared to reach out to different startups yeah and here they are setting meetings they've been in a, they're in a country they don't even know they're meeting the language with mentors yeah. language their language is perfect they speak very well um yeah it's it's so different because you know they're they're fearless like a lot of you you kind of have to like get over your self pride which that's something that's taken me a long time to do and i'm still working on it but like you know to ask for help to ask for guidance like it it takes a lot of character to do that and you know these founders that we've been working with are they're proud of what they're doing but they're not ashamed to ask for advice and ask for help um when needed and right. i just think that that's such a cool trait to have and you know that's that's pretty rare i i really see especially in silicon valley like you know the founders are very Entitled. Yeah, kind of, not 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 in like a bad way, but they're very like, well, mine's the best, and if you don't like me and you're not going to invest, like, go away. You know, it's very prideful, and you know, it's a lot of ego. A lot of ego, and like, I went to you know this school, and I have this degree, and so my company is going to be this, and it's like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like these startups from Armenia, like they're working just as hard if not harder actually i would definitely say harder with innovative with solutions innovative that solution. solve real problems they're profitable companies yeah and they they rely on their hard work not their like background and degrees and all of that which i think is very admirable right so now wrapping up first of all i'd just like to say how did you like your experience um i loved it yeah. so is I, this your favorite podcast yeah so say something about on with shahan Okay, so On With Shahan and Courtney. That's the new <laughs> title. I've already changed it. Okay. So um, it's the best podcast because we have an amazing host yep. who thinks of very thoughtful questions. Oh, wow. Thank and you. And kind of just brings out the best in people. Like, I love your energy. That, I mean, that's that's one of the, like, one million reasons I love, like, that I love you. And, you know, you you just know how to work with people and you make them are you gonna cry no no i'm not gonna cry i just don't want compliment i can't do this anymore <laughs> i thought you were gonna talk about the podcast not me oh well, but the i love you too i love you, you too okay the podcast okay. is you though you oh, are yeah, the podcast right, right, right. on with shahan yeah and right. courtney yeah so i love you too and you're extremely impressive you proved me wrong mm -hmm. uh i thought you were gonna do three orders maybe you ended up <laughs> doing i don't know a ton more than that but you've clearly found your passion and uh that makes me more passionate about what i'm doing because i love startups i love innovation i love growth i love new ideas bringing an idea to life uh watching you bring an idea to life uh right in front of my eyes within 24 hours of me saying something is insane you found product market fit la Kenyatta loves cheese and wine it's that kind of crowd specialty foods so i want to thank you for coming on you'll be on again thank you if you guys like it subscribe in the comments, right? You want on with Jahan and Courtney. Uh, if <laughs> you don't, let the, me know. Or you could change the name to on with the Koshafians. No, that doesn't even rhyme. Okay. On with Koshafians. Oh, that would work, right? Work. Yeah. Eh, Anyways. You got to work on your So books. I want to thank you for joining the podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you uh, for having me. We won't wait too long until the next time. Yeah. And then hopefully... What would be cool is when you do open up a physical retail location, the next podcast 
We'll film from the shop. From the La Canada Cheese Shop. Yep. All right, thanks for joining. Make sure to subscribe. Again, if you want Courtney on future episodes, make sure to comment below 